European football has been mired with racist incidents that have tarnished the beautiful game's image, despite efforts by organizations to crack down on it. And the killing of George Floyd has only served to highlight the problem further. Footballers across Europe have supported the George Floyd protests, but pointed out that racism within their sport still remains widespread and must be tackled. Juventus star Paolo Dybala says players are ready to take action in support of teammates who are racially abused. Gareth Southgate, England's national team manager, says football's anti-racism protocols are unacceptable. Well, to tell us more about this issue, we can talk now to Sanjay Badari. He's the chair of Kick It Out, England's leading football equality and inclusion organisation. Well, thanks for taking time to speak to us here on the programme. Well, let me begin by asking you about uh, Gareth uh, Southgate's comments. Uh, he, where he's uh, described UEFA's uh, protocol as unacceptable. Do you agree? Well, I think all of football probably needs to do more to tackle racism. I think what I'm pleased about is over the last week or so, we've seen this sort of outbreak of common sense, if you like, and pragmatism. Uh, the US Soccer Federation, the, the announcement that you just uh, highlighted, actually is just the latest. We had FIFA and UEFA and the FA all saying that they wouldn't, effectively that they wouldn't sanction players for protesting. Um, I think what we now have is a bit of a movement, and um, all, all, there are many protocols, and some of the UEFA protocols need to be need to be improved. But hopefully, this will provide some of the momentum to help us do, to do that. Yeah. But isn't the real problem that there's this disparity between national leagues? I mean, we've only seen in the last two or three weeks, you know, in the German Bundesliga, various players getting sanctioned or not for you know supporting George Floyd, while in Hungary, a Kenyan player was uh, threatened with sanctions. Yeah, and I think the the, the bigger leagues uh, 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 seem to be taking a much more pragmatic approach. Um, uh, and I think we, we should welcome that. Obviously, very strictly on the rules, there are some, you know, easy, it's easy to commit a technical breach of the rules and get a yellow card. So you looked at something like Jaden Sancho, uh, just by lifting his shirt, that's a yellow card offence. So it may not even, he may not even be given a yellow card for what's written on the T-shirt underneath. Just lifting the, 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 the shirt is a yellow card offence. Uh, I think I would encourage all of the... Uh, governing bodies, all of the national associations, to take their lead from FIFA and UEFA, who have been encouraging a much more pragmatic approach. I think it was Infantino who said that, you know, people like Jaden Sancho should be praised, not punished. Okay, and that's uh, Gianni Infantino, the head of uh, the world uh, football governing body uh, FIFA there. Um, but how do you feel more generally about what well, UEFA's protocols and FIFA's where this rule where there's going to be three incidents and then a team can perhaps walk out. Do you think that should be something that should be reformed or revamped or just removed completely? I think it's something we need to, to, to look at again and we need to continue to look at. I'm sure UEFA always have that kind of protocol co constantly under review. Um, I think it's how it's, how it's executed and we've seen uh, the, it, it's, these rules have actually been there for a long time and w we've been campaigning for many years that the protocol actually be executed. It's not so much a problem with the protocol, more that it's never actually enacted. Uh, uh, and so I think we'd like to see much more consistent execution of the protocol. We're sure we can have some conversations about in improving the protocol, but actually just executing on it in the first place would be a start. Well, I spoke to your predecessor, Lord uh, Herman Oosley, uh, several times about this subject, and he, he basically always said to me, the real problem is that there aren't enough you know, black and minority ethnic players within the game on all levels. You know, sure, you could see them on the pitch, but management, you know, backroom staff, what are you doing to address that? I, th I think that is the, the biggest thing there, are these massive systemic biases in football and when we focus on or we talk about the incidents, 
it, it detracts attention from actually these things that have been around for 20 plus years, which is in, in English football, that is uh, uh, the, the absence of black coaches, the absence of Asian players in, in the UK. Uh, Asians are the biggest ethnic minority and there are just no players at all really making it through. And so uh, and, and the boardrooms being being predominantly male and white. And I think that kind of change has to start at the top. The reality is that particularly with things like coaches, there are a lot of informal networks and that's how jobs are, are kind of handed out. Uh, and so you've got to penetrate and disrupt those informal networks and the leadership has to start at the top. We have to start with diversifying the boardrooms. That's what happens in other industries. I came from, from other industries and, and that's what's going on elsewhere. Sanjay Bandari, the chair of Kick It Out, England's leading football equality and inclusion organisation. Thanks for joining us here on the programme.